friendship could be Until you all shared its magic with me Big adventure Tons of fun A beautiful heart Faithful and strong Sharing kindness It's an easy feat And magic makes it all complete You have mine Hello everyone, Rascal Entertainment's here. And Mama Entertainment, welcome to our podcast. Today we're talking about another popular franchise, this time from Hasbro. The 2010 reboot of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. For this series, there are seven seasons that have aired, and eighth one currently airing now. We're also aware of the spin-off film series, Equestria Girls, and Theatrical Movie, but we'll cover those in a later podcast. We'll just talk about the series. Yes, and I have to say something I never thought I would say. I love My Little Pony. Friendship is magic. Yeah, I never thought I would say it either. So, <laughs> I remember the original series that was out when I was young and uh, the dolls and everything. And I remember the little things. So, My Little Pony, well, this is nothing like it. I am happy to say it is awesome and amazing mm. and great job on taking and rebooting and making something fabulous out of something that was meant just for little girls. Right. And... And I, of course, have never seen the original because I know it was from a while ago. But I have seen a review on there, review the older series and kind of just tear it down because of how, <laughs> cra- I mean, of how horrible it was. And it was just, uh, I guess it was pandering for the time, but it was meant for uh, little girls. And a lot of people already know this. Even if they don't watch mm-hmm. My Little Pony, they're aware of it because this version of the series has become a monster popular show. Mm-hmm. And not just with girls, but with boys too. Right. And of every age. Now, I want to say for the original series, you really... They're two different animals. The original series was meant for very young girls. And it was innocent and um, super syrupy. Because mm-hmm. during that time, that was okay. Right. And little girls were different from little girls now because they weren't exposed to as much on TV. They weren't exposed to as much uh, in their day-to-day lives or in school. It was really different. So My Little Pony, for that time, fit that time. I loved dolls, but My Little Pony, during that time, was just a little too cutesy for me. Mm-hmm. I did like Holly Hobby. But... Okay. Again, the reboot fits not only the time period now, mm-hmm. but as you said, it crosses all boundaries of sex and age and gender, and that is what makes it an awesome show. Right. And also, I've noticed that as the original only had like probably a few seasons at a time, or maybe mm-hmm. one or two, because at the time, you look if you made it past three to four seasons, if mm-hmm. you weren't already popular. This show, as we said, is on the eighth season. A lot of people did not expect for this to last this long, right. but it's because the type of show it has become is why it's it's stayed on. It can get pretty, unlike the other one, it can get pretty dark at times. Mm-hmm. I mean, the first episode has the main character fighting some evil villain that wants to turn the whole land into eternal night. I guess this is a way of letting you know, this is not your parents, my little pony. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And this version was created by Lauren Foss, who you know for a work from her husband, Craig McCracken, mm-hmm. who worked on uh, Powerpuff Girls and Foss Imaginary Friends. She had a little work on there, too. Mm-hmm. This is her first uh, standalone show that she worked on herself. Awesome. She doesn't need any other show. Just let her stay on this one. <laughs> Great job. So, My Little Pony, um, 2010. First of all, before we even get into that, we need to give super, super thanks To Chloe. Yes, Chloe the Hedge Fox. For an awesome intro that she made for us. Thank you, Chloe. It's terrific. And it surpassed all of our hopes that we had 
for what you do. It's great. Thank you so much. Yes, I love it. And when we do the other installments, please, please do intros for us for those as well. Oh, yes, it'll be really fun. Yes. Okay, for um this one, we also know that we there's the phenomena of the bronies, which are known everywhere now. Mm -hmm. And it's basically just guys who are My Little Pony fans, and they're titled bronies. And usually um, adult women who are fans of are called Pega Sisters. Mm -hmm. And we want to say that the bronies are not only straight, but LGBTQ. They are young boys, they're teen boys, they're grown men, they're older men, they're of all ages. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes it great. Because the concepts that are in this uh, version, Friendship is Magic, anyone can relate to. And it does. And it does so in a fun way, in a fun manner. Right. And he says sometimes in a dark manner, sometimes in a silly manner, sometimes in a serious manner. But out, just about every single episode you can relate to on some level. Right. And that's what kind of makes this show really popular. And you see why it has stayed in the popular culture for as many years. It hasn't just faded after a few seasons or mm -hmm. it's just not well known. Because of the type of show it is and it, it covers everything. And they can get really creative with the episodes. Mm -hmm. Whether in the stories or the character names of the ponies. All of these different areas and the pun names of the cities. And, yes. and stuff like Manhattan. And the episodes too. Right. And, uh, and, and everything is just really creative done they always mm -hmm. think of something new and it's just something that really is very enjoyable for anybody who watches and every episode you get something out of it whether it's adventure filled mm -hmm. comedy filled dark mm -hmm. or anything it's just fun to watch mm -hmm. and if you want to know a little more about the my little pony franchise and the um i guess the community you can go on netflix and they actually have some documentaries of the bronies mm -hmm. and um, I don't know what they call it, just the fandom itself. Yeah, it, but it's great, and you learn more, and you see more, and you can see the diversity of the fandom, and it's very interesting. They even have one that has Tara. I'm sorry, not Tara. Ashley Bell, who Rascal call a slave. Bell, and I thought it was hilarious. Um, <laughs> uh, it looked like it spelled a sleigh bell. Like, oh, Ashley Bell. So now I, I call her a sleigh bell on purpose. But she's there, and she's at a convention that they have. They actually invited her and paid for her to her travel there and paid for her appearance. And again, it's really, really interesting for you to see behind the scenes just how the fandom works and mm -hmm. some of the voice actors are. So... Let's talk a little bit about the voice actors. They're a diverse range right. of men and women. Uh, some are actually voice acting stars. Some are stars from other TV shows that have made a home with the My Little Pony fandom right. in the series. And um, they're really well known. I mean, they've got their own fan clubs. And they are superstars. They are My Little Pony superstars. And they will go down in history for being the voice actors for these series and some of them do some of them do do voiceovers for other animated series but they are most well known for the my little pony friendship is magic uh city race um okay so we are uh, well, first off we have uh Twilight Sparkle, who's voiced by Tara Strong. The incomparable Tara Strong. Well, you know her in almost every cartoon that's ever existed. Mm -hmm. um, there's her baby dragon assistant, Spike, voiced by Kathy Wesluck. Right. And then we have Rainbow Dash. And we have Applejack, both voiced by Ashley Ball. And then there's Verity, voiced by Tabitha St. Germain. We have Fluttershy and um, Pinkie Pie. Both voiced by Andrea Liebman. And then there's also several other characters appearing. And we're just going to mention a few that appear the most. Like, Let's um, mention the big hitter, Discord. Yeah. Uh, Discord is actually voiced by John DeLancey. And I love John DeLancey because he appeared on the Star Trek um, Next Generation series as Q. And he was loved by the fandom. He's smart, witty. Uh, intelligent, his character was crazy, and caused a lot of discord, just like this character. So it looks like this particular character was created just for him. Great job. All the nuances of the Q character come through in this animated character. Mm -hmm. And his character turns out to be really fun 
and he's growing and he's made a friends with his he's made friends his first friend with Fluttershy and it's just awesome that he's in here and I'm so happy that he's part regular part of the cast love John Delancey <laughs> And, and name there's a couple more. Okay. Um, we also see uh, Princess Celestia, who's voiced by Nicole Oliver. Mm -hmm. I still wonder why she's called a princess, and there's no parents. She should be Queen Celestia, but I'm not going to question that. Mm -hmm. uh, Princess Luna, who's also voiced by St. Germain. Mm -hmm. uh, we see some of Applejack's uh, family in there, her, her brother, Big Mac, uh, her grandma, Granny Smith, and a little sister, uh... What's her name? Apple Apple Bloom. And whom are they voiced by? Okay, uh, Big Mac's voiced by Peter New. Mm -hmm. Granny Smith is also voiced by uh, St. Germain. Right. And then uh, Apple Bloom's voiced by Michelle Kreber. Okay. So that's all we'll go through because there's such a large yeah. cast for this show. And then it keeps growing every season. So it's almost impossible to not take up the entire podcast with just telling you every pony that comes in every season. So you're right. just going to have to watch and see. Right. So okay, yeah, it came we'll after. Give a shout out yeah. to the merchandising company for this because they're brilliant. Mm -hmm. There's not a place that you can go to that doesn't have My Little Pony merchandise. Right. And the price range can be from cheap to expensive. I have seen My Little Pony merchandise at Dollar Tree <laughs> and 99 cent only. So they really, really um, span the entire um, specter of places to shop and price ranges. So there's no reason that anyone who loves My Little Pony can't afford to have merchandising or to see this show. Because mm -hmm. they've got it on Netflix. They've got DVDs. Mm -hmm. um, they have a movie that came out recently. Everyone everywhere can enjoy the oh, can yes. enjoy the fantastic world of My Little Pony. So, All right. let's get started. We're just going to go season by season a little bit. So, season one it has 26 episodes. Yeah, and... If, and um, what every was the arc season, of that season. Well, Tell us what you're the, gonna say. well, there are 26 episodes every season except the fourth one, which only had 13 seasons for some reason. We couldn't figure out why. Mm -hmm. um, there are 172 episodes so far. So, like, oh my gosh. And as you know, there's a spinoff series uh, that starts off somewhere in between the series and then a theatrical film. Okay. Now, you were about to say, I think, something about each one has a different arc. Is that correct? Um, a little bit, yeah. Because cause it looks like it starts from this season when it when it first, the series first starts. You know, you get that dark opening with Twilight Spiral coming to uh, Ponyville. Because mm -hmm. she was in uh, Canterlot. So, we're talking about season one now. We're right. Go ahead and cover season right. one. Right. Okay. And uh, she is tasked to go to... Ponyville by Prince Celestia as her mentor, mm -hmm. and she's supposed to be learning about friendship, and she has all the technicalities, what she knows about it, but not of what friendship actually is. Right. So that becomes the story of the first two episodes, where she goes there and she meets all the main characters, that end up becoming her friends later, and she meets Prince Celestia, and she also has to fight off her sister Luna, who was, you know, turned evil, the Nightmare Moon, and she was chopping the moon, and she comes out, right. and she wants to take over the land, so uh, that pretty much became what started it, it was just pretty much about her learning about friendship. Mm -hmm. And every episode, every time she would learn something, she would write a letter to Princess Celestia about, you know, Princess Celestia, so and so and so and so and so, and then that would be, yeah, the end episode. And they're pretty basic, like, show good sportsmanship, and all they share, and be fair to friends, and it was pretty basic stuff. Mm -hmm. And after that season, then the lessons actually started to get more serious. It wasn't just basic ones. Okay. So, back to season one, the arc was her learning, um... What friendship really meant in writing the letters. And the letters were interesting because it was just sitting down like she was writing a friend. And I like that each, as you mentioned, each episode conveyed the lesson. And then she told you, just in case you might have missed it, mm -hmm. she told you exactly what the lesson was while she was writing the letter. Right. And that's a very different um, trope. I've never seen that done in any show, so mm -hmm. that was pretty neat. Usually you have to figure out the lesson, or they gotta tell you, like, hey, there's the lesson here, or they go, joke, we didn't learn nothing. <laughs> it was also a great way to introduce you to the main characters of the show, because during that season, uh, a lot of them got their own dedicated episodes, so we right. got to learn about 
characters that you and I really didn't know anything about, and we got to learn who our favorites were during that first season, which was incredible, because sometimes, as you said, it takes a little while to decide whom your favorite character is and right. you really like, but it and was they, pretty clear-cut for right. us. Right, and especially they tell you straight off the bat which, uh, what character's personality was like, mm -hmm. and they also all represent some elements of friendship. Mm -hmm. And one is honesty, they have laughter, mm -hmm. kindness, generosity, mm -hmm. loyalty, and oh, magic. And, and I'm like, magic? Oh, and okay, that's new. Together, it's, you said harmony? Yeah, they are the elements of harmony, yeah. Right. And all together, it's friendship. Right, so that's neat. I mm -hmm. mean, it's, it's really great. And yeah. you can see how this show will grow on anyone because right. of how it's being written and how the concepts are intertwined into each episode's story. So okay. it's great. And then for... For this season, like we said, of how the lessons are done, mm -hmm. and then like near the end of the season, this isn't any spoils or anything, but f I, ca I can mention this. At the end of the season, they were pretty much preparing for this. They called the Grand Galloping Gallop, which was right. just this big party hosted by the princess in her castle, and everybody in Ponyville is invited, and they get to go. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much what the season was about. It wasn't anything big yet. It was right. just really simple and fun. They were just preparing for that, and they think, oh, this is going to be the best night ever, and then you see what happens when you watch it. Right. And that was pretty much it. It was just a good film. It was like a fun end of the season. And for... Uh, now we'll move on to season two? Yes. Okay. Uh, and for season two... Which aired uh, originally September 17th of 2011. Wow. And the one. first four seasons appeared on the Hub Hub Network. Right. Um, for the, and then as the season begins, season two, that's when they start bringing in all the, the darker elements. Mm -hmm. More than just one episode to, to start you off with, this is what becomes the trend every single season. And we it's, were kind of surprised right. to see this. And... Every season, I want to say quickly, now ends with a nice cliffhanger. Right. So, continue right. season two. Right. So, for this season, the arc is um, the friends learning more about magic. Now that she's learned a lot, mm -hmm. now it's time for the friends to learn because they're all part of it. Mm -hmm. And they're pretty much like the protectors of question at this rate. Right. And the season starts with the character we mentioned before, Discord. Right. And he was the villain of the first two seasons and turned everything topsy-turvy and mm -hmm. everything was just back and forwards. He knew their weaknesses. <laughs> he set them up as an homage to the character Q right. on Star Trek by having them do all these challenges that test their element, right. and he would take them away. And it was just a really fun callback to that for adults, and, I kept, and it was still fun for kids. And I kept saying, that's what Q did. That's just what Q did. That's exactly what Q did. And you were looking at me like, okay, so I need to see this Q. So, after we finished season two, we actually went on to Netflix and found Star Trek The Next Generation and Rascal watched every episode that Q appeared in. Then she says, I get it. I get it now. And she actually liked the character Q, mm. who was not supposed to be a lovable villain, but he ended up being a likable villain on Star Trek as well as becoming a likable character in uh my Little Pony, right. Friendship is Magic. Right, and he and he really became popular within the fandom, because mm -hmm. I see online a lot of people like to use Discord as the mischievous villain mm -hmm. when they do mashups, or when they've done fanfics, and they kind of ship him and Fluttershy. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. And he's really become popular within the fandom, uh, outside of the main characters. Mm -hmm. And then the Stessy, like I said, uh, I think they had... The other characters kind of write letters to Prince Celestia about what they've learned because they were starting to learn lessons too. So every once in a while you would see them write stuff uh, to her. And there was all one episode where it was, that really just had me laughing was Laplejack learned a lesson when they had a, two uh, con artists who were selling apple cider, which is apparently yes. alcohol for <laughs> ponies, basically. And at the end, she said, Dear Princess Celestia, I didn't learn anything. I was right all the way. I'm like, oh, wow, you just wasted an episode. <laughs> and they wanted to drink that instead of water. Yeah, like, was well, like, yeah, that was the alcohol of my little pony. Because they were just like, give me. <laughs> and, and then the season finale for that... Without um, giving anything away. Um, this was a two-parter about Twilight's brother, Shining Armor, mm -hmm. and he was getting married to uh, a really old, to an old friend of hers that was a Princess Cadence. Yes, sorry, and, and um, she we can't see her, her old babysitter. Yeah, her old baby. Yeah, you're right. Her old babysitter. And she kind of went there and see uh, all these memories and stuff. And she starts. She's actually acting much differently than she remembered. And then you kind of see what really happens, and that's when it really started to up the ante on. 
they're uh, the dark side of my little right. pony. Mm-hmm. And then, in, you know, in the two episodes, it was fleshed out. But it was great, and it was exciting. Right. And again, we were like, wow, this is really good. This right. is not what we were expecting. Right. And then we were hooked for sure. After season two, I think we knew we were hooked, and we had to finish the entire uh, seven seasons on that. Right. And then, and then we get into season three, which was pretty short, only 13 episodes. And that originally aired on November 10th of 2012. And what actually started off was really funny is that Twilight didn't have a friendship lesson for once, and she was mm-hmm. panicking, and she's like, well, every episode, because the status quo has been every episode, she gives the princess a lesson, because that's her mentor, right. and it's like, if she doesn't give her a lesson, then she might not be learning anything, and so she was kind of just spying out of control, and had this cuckoo music, and she was, her hair was fell out, she was showing her teeth, and going, ah, what you have anything on for me to solve, and she was kind of create problems so she could solve them, and just so she could have a lesson, and there was a lesson in that, right. too. But I was like the first that she didn't have a lesson to give her, and and in turn, yet, right? Well, not yet. But she was still um, the caretaker of Spike, the right. little dragon, purple right. dragon, right? Okay. And then, like I said, short season. It was just basically one-off episodes. No favorites here for me personally, mm-hmm. but uh, doesn't mean it wasn't a good season. By the end of the season, um. There was this sort of time travel element where she had to learn what happened to the princess before, what happened now, and in turn of all the lessons and all the things she helped, she mm-hmm. becomes Princess Twilight Sparkle right. at the end of the season. And that was really a nice twist to right. have in there. Right. And is it the point? Is this the point where the movies start coming in? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. After the third or fourth season, I believe they were so quick. To, with each other that it kind of had to be. I know Looney Cat told me. Right. Um, so we don't know if it was three or four. It was either three or four. It was after she's in the castle. So it might be after season three. Okay. Um. Yeah, then it starts to spin off movie called Equestria Girls where there was an old student of Princess Celestia's that wanted to take magic for herself. So she took Twilight's crown and went to another dimension. Mm-hmm. And no, this is not Star Wars, The Forces of Evil. <laughs> uh, she goes to this one. Uh, uh, Prince Celestia sends Twilight to this other world where everyone, every pony is a human. Right. And that's why it's called Question Your Girls. And she has to get used to standing on twos. And she keeps acting like a horse. And everyone thinks she's lost her mind. And it was a really creative idea. And the game will cover... The entire um, series of Equestrian movies in and the different mo- podcasts. Right. So, um, is that the? Did you tell the um, the arc finale for, for number three? Oh uh, yeah, that was it. Okay. So then let's move on to season four, which aired originally November twenty third, twenty thirteen, and had twenty six episodes. Right. And it was the final season that aired on the Hub Hub Network. Right. And it kind of showed how Twilight had to get used to being uh, the princess of friendship. Right. So now she had all these duties to do, and I don't make jokes out of that. And she and, was happy because she had something to do. Yeah, because she was doing the same thing and, over and over right. again, and still learn lessons, but they didn't no longer had to sign to Prince Celestia because they were getting better at it, and they will learn lessons every day, even with that, they didn't have to write to her, but they still kept the books, which comes up later. Mm-hmm. And more like said one-off episodes was kind of the arc of her learning the roles of the princess, mm-hmm. and then it gets to the season finale, I believe. Uh, I believe for season four, he yeah, is the one where they introduce. Uh, I think another villain they get into the mix. Uh, they had this villain who was incredibly dark for this show. I mean, they've had dark villains, but this one was... The one that looked like a minotaur? Yeah, it okay. was called t And okay. he found this whole past where he wanted to take magic and friendship from everybody so he'd be powerful to rule over everything. Yeah, that and did he really was, dark. And yeah. he was the toughest villain. Mm-hmm. Uh, Discord was just a, kind of like a joke, but still a threat. The second season villain was a threat, didn't know it. Right. Th- third season kind of, sort of threat. This right. one was just no joke. He was uh, really t- a, a menace, and, and he would destroy anything in his path. And he manipulated Discord to assist him. Right. And you could tell Discord had changed. He wasn't sure that he was doing the wrong thing, and he went ahead and went along with it because he lied to him. Right. But then when he found out that he lied to him, 
then he made amends. Right. But we won't give anything away for the finale. Right. <laughs> well, I could tell you definitely that this was a darker episode and also show more changes for Twilight. And she had to fight him off. And people actually said that's one of their favorite episodes of the series. Best fights of the series. Best moments. And like, it's best of something for I this whole thing. I think that was definitely because, the part the best of the season. Right. Because she was pretty much fighting this giant evil creature by herself and she had all the, all this magic she had to fight him on her own and people were really like this is the most intense moments ever she had to fight this uh, no I keep saying fight it on her own and she was still standing right. no matter what happened and like oh this is my little pony no. and one person said rainbows are used for joy and happy and peace and this show used it for weapons of mass destruction yes. <laughs> effectively <laughs> right and then we also get this introduction of a, a, a tree of harmony mm -hmm. and twilight gets it's a castle now because yes. he blew up her home and it's a it's a um beautiful castle too I right mean, it's really regal it's like wow twilight has stepped up <laughs> right and then um yeah so, so yeah so that's how that season ends then it gets to and then um she she feels like it's really big and she wants to personalize it, which mm -hmm. ends up happening in season five. Right. Which aired originally April 4th, 2015, and mm -hmm. it had 26 episodes. Right. Uh, and uh, then that's when it began to be aired on Discovery Family. Right, that's for true. Three seasons. Now, I do remember my favorite episode for that season was, I I hope it's the right season. There are so many episodes, I apologize if I get the order wrong. But you're really good at remembering details and the seasons and the episode names and numbers like nobody else so you're probably right <laughs> they had this one episode Looney with... Carol, let us know if you're not right <laughs> oh i was gonna mention one for season four too but let me mention this one first for season five there was an episode with Pinkie pie where she was trying to make friends with a newcomer was a donkey named Cranky Doodle Donkey. <laughs> and he didn't want to be bothered with her. He's like, go away. And she was talking about, why won't he be your friend? And like, most of you thought it was going to be not everybody can be your friend, mm -hmm. which was a lesson later on. But then she found out what was really going on with him. Mm -hmm. He had a girlfriend years ago, and he's been sitting spending years looking for her and he mm -hmm. finally gave up and it was like 20 30 years later and he right. gave up and that's why he was so cranky right. and it was a really fun episode whether your view on the care whatever your view on the character or not mm -hmm. it was kind of a, a nice episode and how far length she'll go to help somebody where she knows them or not right very true and then my favorite for season four another Pinkie pie episode was one they had uh, Weird Al Yankovic do a, her kind of a rival, it was a pony named Cheese Sandwich, and he was a party planner like her, and she thought that was kind of like competition at first, right. and then it was kind of about who would be the best party planner for Rainbow Dash, and they kind of had a musical style mm -hmm. episode, I was like, oh my gosh, and it was just fun, I was always with Weird Al on there. Yes, absolutely. Now let me ask you, is this the season where Pinkie Pie did her detective work or no? I think it is season season five because it was pretty far in. Yeah. Yes, and that of that season, my favorite episode. What's the name of it? Oh, uh, which uh, which one? Where Pinkie Pie becomes the detective. The mystery on the Friendship Express. I love this episode because it was fun, and I got to see Pinkie Pie in a different light than usual. And I love some of the things she said. Like I said a lot. Or you'll see me type it on um, some of my comments because I think it's hilarious. And she said, "Who do, who did done do it?" <laughs> and then she said, um, you got to figure out uh, who did it. No, she said, who done it? Uh -huh. Who done did it? Yeah, who, and then yeah. she said, no, you mean who did it? She said, yeah, who did done do that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, oh, no, I did done do that. <laughs> and I loved it. It was fun, but you got to see a different side of Pinkie Pie. You got to see she has some sleuthing skills. And she, you know, she's always this fun and high strung character but you got to see she really can think and when she's not sugar crazy right, and do deductive reasoning so that was for that season my favorite episode right. next to the season finale which you're going to tell us about right um oh wait there was another episode but i'll tell you after no, i tell you ahead. okay there was another one from another earlier season i'm kind of remembering now that we're going through it so you're going backwards yeah a little bit i'm very sorry five. i'm sorry um okay for the season my finale, I think, I believe, okay, for season five, we inter introduced in the, 
in the beginning of the season to Starlight Glimmer, mm -hmm. who is not what she seems, like Gravity Falls or something. And remember we talked about this in another podcast right. where they go to this town because they, they got this map now which is supposed to tell them when there's a friendship problem they have to go, one of them or that all of them have to go the, fix it. What the Fish Moments you, podcast. Right. And it was called the Cutie Map, well, another two-parter. Mm -hmm. But they go to this town where everyone has an equal sign on their flank. Mm -hmm. And it's like no one has a special ability. Everyone is literally the same. Mm -hmm. They don't have any color on their mane or fur or anything. Step for ponies. Yeah, the so. step for ponies. <laughs> and you just found out how crazy uh, Starlight Glimmer was when you saw it. And, well, Link, she'll go to get what she wants. And mm -hmm. it was like, oh, my gosh. It got really dark. Like, and Mom even said at, th Mama said at this point, that okay, you can't show this to your kids now. <laughs> and like, this episode's not for kids. Do not show this to your kids. This is not a kid's show. <laughs> and, um, and then pretty much the whole season went back to the normal one-off episodes with different characters, different issues, less in every episode mm -hmm. until the end of the season. And also, we also got introduced this season and last season to Pinkie Pie's sister, yes. Mod Pie. Oh, we love Mod oh, Pie. Oh my yeah, gosh, she is, is awesome hilarious. Yes. And, 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 and her introduction was has to be one of the best episodes and one of our favorites. Yes, uh, absolutely. Yeah, the, these are the two I want to mention. For this one, for when she's first introduced, she's kind of, uh, Pinkie Pie wants her to see her friends mm -hmm. and see what they have in common. And right. the whole time, she just talks like this. And she's just really drab. And she's really calm. She barely shows an emotion in but her voice. But she's so pretty. Right. Pink, oh, her, Pinkie's pink, and she's purple. Right. And mauve. Right. Yeah. And then each one, they thought, oh, oh, she didn't, she didn't get along with them. That's what she thought. Mm -hmm. Or what's up? What they thought they would get along, or they really act like because she always would talk about rocks. Right. She likes talking about moves rocks. She's really slow. Right. And she's really dumb. Right. She's got a pet rock. <laughs> and then there was a point in the episode what's where she. What's his name? Boulder. His name is Boulder. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, I wrote a poem. It's about rocks. They're all about rocks. And they're like, oh. <laughs> and then they had at one point in the episode where Pinkie Pie was trying to get this little obstacle course for everybody so mm -hmm. everybody would feel included. Right. And then she got trapped in the mountain. She almost got crushed. And you saw she demolished and demolished. She just road runner all the way to her and right, destroyed the her rocks sister. and she hugged her and like what were you doing that's the only time you ever right. show emotion what were you thinking and it was like oh that's so sweet right <laughs> it's all it's, oh, and I'm like rock and if I love Pinkie Pie like, oh, even though they're like po little poor opposites mm -hmm. they still love each other and, and she loves her, her sister and that's when they fell in love with Maude because right. they saw how much she loved Pinkie Pie right it was a great episode for uh, season four or five because she appears again later on mm -hmm. and another favorite i'll mention after we finish this season um like i said these the basic um so it's just like i said uh kind of just going around now helping people with friendship problems because they mm -hmm. have this map and every time the little marks glow and they go to different places all across the equestria mm -hmm. and they go help people whether it's in the city which they go to several times they go to small towns they go to farms they go to lakes they go to all these different places because it always knows when there's a problem mm -hmm. and um then there's another episode that became another fan favorite was the 100th episode called slice of life mm -hmm. and in that one i love this episode because it was completely different from every everything else they've done right a lot of the background ponies got popular within the fandom, like Derpy. Derpy Hooves got really popular. So they decided to do an entire episode where you see, you know how the ponies have their fights and their little plots and episodes, right. and you always see these people in the background see it. Well, it's kind of like the powerless of the of the show, mm -hmm. where you get to see what do the background ponies do while the main characters are doing what they do. What right. do the other characters do? So it starts off this chain of events that goes on in the background, which actually will simultaneously go on with their story as mm -hmm. well and don't know it and uh, starts off with Derpy mm -hmm. who then goes to Dr. Who's then they go to the big Lebowski bowling pony just right. so he can get some stitches in his shirt then they go to this undercover agent pony <laughs> they have to, and all this was just to plan Cranky do Cranky Doodle Donkey's wedding right. and they were all trying all working together to help 
bring it because it was going to be in one day. So they were all working together to make it happen at one time. And it was just fun because like, oh, wait, they're doing that. You can help me with this. Follow me. And it's like they had their own mission. The background ponies had their own mission to do. And it was really fun how they all played off each other. They were all usually ones you've never seen before. And I love that episode. Like, oh, that's so funny. (laughs) And and they had Muffins, DJ Pond 3, Octavia was the 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 musician mm-hmm. and bon bon, and I tell you the secret agent it, it was just was just hilarious I know that had to be a really popular episode with people who love the background ponies it was kind of like when you're at a concert and you have the bleacher section and the nosebleed section and nobody pays attention mm-hmm. so in this series the bleacher nosebleed section got their own episode right so they got some love right and I <laughs> love that episode that was one of the best ones and my favorite of season five and I also like from that season of course it has discord in it make new friends but keep discord Oh, yeah, that was another great one. Uh, Discord, uh, Find My Flesh Eye has another friend. It's right. called Tree Hugger, who's a hippie pony. Right. And he gets incredibly jealous. Like, like, like he's like, she's going to replace him. So he tries to do everything, get her attention, or show that he's fun. Right. And he, and he cares <laughs> that much where he'll just pop up anywhere and say, oh, well, I can do this. Right. I can do that. <laughs> and the friend's always cool with everything he does, and it ticks him off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I love that episode from that season, too. And now for the two-part finale, which returns us to the cutie remark. Right. And then Sally Bloomer wants Revenge and Twilight Sparkle. Mm-hmm. So she has a, she made a time, she also a time travel spell that was made by Star Swole the Bearder, who you've heard mentioned in the show a lot of times. Mm-hmm. And she back, goes back in time to the point where Rainbow Dash was at this uh, event. And these, this event was caused this giant rain boom which made all the main characters find the cutie marks and their talents and how they all were destined to become friends at the same time. Right. She changed the timeline. So now, because that didn't happen, they didn't meet. They mm-hmm. didn't get their marks on at the same time. They didn't mm-hmm. know their talents till later. They never got them. And it, it was all topsy-turvy. And then... This was like their right, science fiction. Right. Episode. Twilight found out when she went to the present that the first time it happened, uh, the question was... The, was was taken over by one of the villains from another season called King Sombra mm-hmm. when they had this Crystal Empire arc in one of the seasons. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was a, was that was their Mad Max storyline. And then she would go back, go went back to the same time and stop her again. Then she still messed it up. She went back. Another villain took over. Then she went back again. And it becomes a back and forth thing. Every time she went back to stop her, mm-hmm. she still ended up in stopping Rainbow Dash. And then went back to the present. Some villain took over. And eventually got to a point where the last time she did it, everything was desolate. And you'll have to watch to find out what happened. Yeah, and it was like, whoa, that's like the darkest it's ever gotten. I'm like, I've never imagined them putting that in there. And like, God, because they didn't become friends. Because they didn't say that because they didn't become friends, Equestria was destroyed. There was no life. No ponies, no plants, no animals, nothing. It was a wasteland. All because of the Troll Hunters episode. Right. uh, As well. So, yeah. I was like, oh, whoa, that was intense. But we are happy to say there is a good ending, but we won't tell you how it happened. Right. So, now we'll move on to Season 6, which first aired March 26, 2016, with 26 episodes on, again, the Discovery Family Channel. Right. And that's what you'll find them mostly on, because I see them advertise this show a lot on that channel. Now, it's probably a big hit now with them. Mm -hmm. Um... Season six has the kind of the aftermath of what happened with uh, Starlight, and the part two parter begins with something not as dark, but still, um, um, still engaging. Right. With the Crystal Heart, which powered this Crystal Empire where Shining Armor is mm-hmm. and and Princess Cadence, right. and it said it needed to power everything, and that's what kind of gave the people hope and joy and stuff because it, it broke. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, <laughs> and, uh, it, it broke because of their newborn baby. They have one called Flurry Heart. I'm like, oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. That's the name of the baby. That's cute. <laughs> that cutie. And she's a, little, and she's a baby alicorn. Mm-hmm. So she had all this intense uh, magic. Mm-hmm. And she accidentally breaks it. So they, and it was also, because it was broken, it was going to bring back, um... King uh, Somber because there was nothing to protect the Empire. Right. He was going to come back if they didn't fix it soon. Right. 
And they also introduced another new character named Sunburst, who turned out to be an old friend of Starlight's. And he becomes part of the cast uh, this season as well, mm -hmm. and part of the uh, Crystal Empire. So, what would you say the arc for this season was? Well, basically, it was teaching Starlight friendship. Since, since uh, Paula pretty much graduated from friendship, and was the friends of the friendship, she became a teacher to her. Mm -hmm. And teaching her, like, uh, how to do it. I couldn't do it the same way as her from the beginning of the series, because she was a different pony. So, she was kind of giving her... Like, uh, tips of what to do, how mm -hmm. she will learn friendships differently. Uh, there was also this small, tiny arc where they had where uh, she wanted to be friends with... She was friends with uh, Trixie, who's the right. so, uh, self-proclaimed magician of the <laughs> show. And Twilight was still in trust and thinking she was still bad. And, Twi and uh, Star kept telling her, no, she's different. And they were each other's first friend. Right. And he saw, she saw she really was her first, but she wasn't playing anything or trying to get back at Twilight. She really right. was trying to be Starlight's friend. And it was like, ah. And she was, still, she was still vain as heck, but she had a heart. And then you also began to like... Uh, Starlight Glimmer more. You were right. saying that she was a likable character. Mm -hmm. And like you said, that she truly changed and she truly wanted to be better. And that made her, you know, as the entire season went on, you got to see these little things she would do in episodes where she got to have a little more exposure in episodes where she would make more appearances and do more things. Mm -hmm. So you could kind of say this was her season of mm -hmm. growth. Ta yeah, yeah, basically it is. And uh, my favorite of the season would be... Well, one's a favorite, one's a side favorite. Okay. Favorite would be they had a holiday special. They have their own version of a holiday called Hearthwarmings, mm -hmm. which is a celebration of a friendship as a part of Equestria's history of how it first came to be. Mm -hmm. And they kind of celebrate it like we celebrate our December holidays. Right. And in this one, uh, Starlight doesn't understand the point of it. She kind of doesn't celebrate it, doesn't think it's a big deal. So, Twilight tells her a story in the style of a Christmas carol, mm -hmm. but done in condensed 22-minute span of how this character, they snowfall frost, who hated the holiday, wanted to get rid of it, and she's visited by a ghost of, of heartwarming past, present, and future. Mm -hmm. And it kind of took a different turn. Rather than showing, you know, how it would affect the person... Mm -hmm. And why she celebrate the holiday? Because it really was an important holiday. Mm -hmm. It showed what happened, what her effect on everyone else was. Mm -hmm. And generally, if she did, if she succeeded in getting rid of the holiday, then the it would be a wasteland. And the so they had these things where wind goes, there will be eternal winter, and no one will be able to live in Equestria anymore. And I'm like, wow, it took a rather interesting turn. It was a whole different take on the story. Okay, and your second one? Oh, uh, Spice Up Your Life, which is the one where they help the father and daughter who are running an Indian restaurant. That, that was nice. That was I a pretty good one. one. Yeah. I like the song, too, and the <laughs> message about all the flavor of food. And, right. and I thought, yeah, that was a really good one. That's why I said side fair, because I didn't like it as much as Heartwarming Tale, but mm -hmm. it was still a good episode. Right. And now for the finale for season six? To Wear and Back Again, which was a two-parter. This time it took a different turn, mm -hmm. where it focuses on Starlight and Trixie, mm -hmm. there was Thorax and Discord, mm -hmm. and Thorax was introduced um, a little earlier in the in the season, where uh, Spike befriended him. He was a changeling who right. you know took over in one of the past seasons, and he was the one changeling that didn't want to feed off of love. He wanted to give love and wanted to be friends, but he hid because people were scared of him, mm -hmm. and he couldn't handle all love without spazzing out and wanting to feed off of it but he wanted a friend spike became his first friend right. and he said this changeling can change then why can't the others mm -hmm. and he was kind of an outcast among his kind because he was the one that didn't want to fight he wanted right. to be friends mm -hmm. and they kind of and even discourse said that this is quite the cast of supportive characters <laughs> the secondary characters episode where they had to save the main six and all these uh, ponies in Equestria, they had been kidnapped by uh, Changelings and the Crystal's Empire, mm -hmm. and uh, they had to go and save them, and think like, what can we do? Where, where, we don't we don't have powers like them, we don't work as well as them, but they were still gonna find a way to do it, mm -hmm. and what really got them going was that Discord was pissed, they kidnapped Fluttershy, and that yes. was hilarious. Oh my god. He was God. like, oh, they're gone, oh, and so they kidnapped Pinkie Pie and Twilight and Fluttershy, and they took Fluttershy? <laughs> where are they? He was like, for blood, yeah. then. <laughs> and that was a really another interesting episode, which ended with um, 
a different change for the changelings, right. which I won't reveal, but it kind of changed another, again, with the status quo, exactly. but still learning about friendship and seeing that every character was capable, mm -hmm. any character was capable of saving them, any character, if given the chance, can do great things, because they were the ones that, as you know, were the outcast or the ones nobody trusted, or they kind of weren't iffy about, and then they proved that they had come a long way since you first saw them at some point in the series. Absolutely. And now... We get to the final season that we have watched is season seven, which originally aired April 15th, 2017 and had 26 episodes. And for me, I think season seven has been the most diverse and most exciting uh, season of the series mm -hmm. because of so many plot twists, so many stories, backstories that have been shared, so many questions that have been answered. Mm -hmm. And I have my absolute all favorite of all time um, episode that occurred this season. So tell us what the arc of season seven is. Okay. So this one actually did not have much of an arc this time. It was back to kind of what season was about. Season one was about um, you just learning lessons and helping people. So they still had to go to uh, different places and help people. Mm -hmm. But now we have been introduced in so many other places and new characters have become right. allies. Mm -hmm. Now you've got good changelings now right. you've got a dragon a dra little dragon zone right. that can now because now uh they have dragon lore so now they become friends with ponies you got discord being friendly mm -hmm. you got all these uh different regions now who have become allies so the question has grown even more right since the last season and it kind of just starts off from exactly where i left off and they thought starlight glimmer was going to be gone i thought you got rid of her character but she turned out to stay mm -hmm. thank goodness because a lot of people liked her and this has been regarded as the best season of the series. Yeah. I've seen a lot of people say that, uh, that they've had one hit after another. Every episode, you're into it, no matter who it's about or what it's about. I agree. Now, tell us about your uh, favorite episode before I tell you mine. My favorite episode of the entire series, my second one being the one where Pinkie Pie becomes the detective, which you told us the name of before, and I can't remember. The mm, on, on Friendship yes. Express. My all-time favorite now is Discordant Harmony. I absolutely loved and adored this episode. And it starts off with Fluttershy and Discord having their regular uh, tea time party at Fluttershy's house. Mm -hmm. So Discord says, you know, next time, why don't I do it? I see how much time and effort you put into having a tea party. Let me have it. Let me do it this time. Do the honors. And he really didn't know just how much um, time she put in. He thought he did. And he was going to all these different stores looking for the teapot and the teacups and the different tea and the, the um, uh, pastries they would the have. The decorations. Yeah. And every place he went, he was looking for these really offbeat and crazy items. And they were just regular items. So he would d turn the items into things he thought... That would be uh, awesome and the way he would like to have it. And the funniest part is when he would pay for the items, he would leave all these darn gold coins. I was like, yeah, come shop where I am. Right. And people were still kind of off because they're like, you're a Fluttershy's friend. Right. And he would get offended. <laughs> and he had a flying, the teapot was just a regular teapot, so he put wings on the teapot. And then he wanted a special CD for them to have instead of a regular couch. And then my all-time favorite of all the items, he wanted to get tea. And so the the um, the lady who owned the tea shop, she said, well, I recommend ginseng tea. He said, oh, that sounds interesting. Does it sing? She said, no, it says ginseng tea. And he's like, that will never do. And all of a sudden, all these tea bags got wings and little faces and started going, <laughs> la da da dee, dee 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 dee. <laughs> Oh, it seems that I got here just in time. Oh, singing ginseng. I'll take it. Are you sure you're friends with Fluttershy? You seem so very different from her. Well, of course we're friends. She gets me, and you obviously do not. Are you sure you're friends with Fluttershy? <laughs> the very nerve. <laughs> I'm just sitting there going, this is adorable. He's oh my gosh. Perfect. I want these tea bags. Right. He's like, oh, this is perfect. I'll take it. And oh, then, and yeah. I like the glowing, the glowing flying self-folding yes, napkins. I, I love it. You were peeking by said, where can I find the, the flying, glowing, self-folding, fun sheet napkins? And it's just all this creativity and wonderful ideas put into the episode. And basically, he decides that she wouldn't like him as he is, and he becomes self-conscious. So he changes everything about him to be humdrum and normal. 
and it ends up with this um, hilarious outcome to the episode we won't tell. But it was such, for me, a darling episode because it cemented the friendship between Discord and Fluttershy. The, you know, two people that everyone kept saying, you know, they can't be friends or you're friends. And it shows just how much he adores Fluttershy. And it shows just how much Fluttershy adores Discord. Mm -hmm. And I absolutely love this episode. This is my favorite of all time, not only of this season, but the entire series. Because it's silly and it's fun. But the message is, you know, when you have friends and you have friends that are true friends, they love you for whom you are. And you shouldn't be changing yourself because of things someone else says or because you have self-doubt or you think you're not good enough because that's why the people who love you love you. Mm -hmm. So it was just awesome and amazing and my favorite episode ever. Okay. Now, what's your favorite episode of season seven? Uh, I would have to be the one right after Discord and Harmony would be the perfect pair, mm -hmm. which a lot of people have said the most emotional episode ever. It, that would be it my was, it was just like, season. you didn't expect them to go this, this route. Now, for this one, it's about the best part, voice-wise, is that William Shatner was part of the cast. Oh, yeah. Oh, was awesome. I, said, I think that's William Shatner. Oh, my gosh. It's the captain. It's the captain. <laughs> and at the end, you said, well, let's check. It could be someone who sounds like him. Like, no, right. that's William Shatner. And, yes, it was William Shatner. Kudos and hooray. Yeah, I want a I got a big star for this one. <laughs> Okay, but the story for this one is about Applejack and her family. Uh, Apple Bloom buys some pears from a, I guess, a pear family. And that's Sue's voice by a guy named Grand Pear, and that's the William Shatner's uh, voice. Smart. And they kind of hide it from the grandma because they didn't realize the grandma can't stand pears. Instead of apples and oranges, kind of apples and pears. The Apple and, fam Apple and pear family have been fighting for years, and you didn't know why. And it kind of turns out that... Uh, their mom was a pear, the dad was an apple, and the mom's a pear. And you kind of got this whole, almost Romeo and Juliet style yes. backstory it's of so their parents. Oh, so sweet. <laughs> and you kind of found what happened, what caused this feud, and how they've known each other since they were little foals. And they uh, fell in love when they were, I guess, teenagers. Kind of, yeah, I had to do the math. Right. And. And the family was so fighting, they didn't want them together, so they would always kind of meet up in secret. Mm -hmm. It was like, ah, and it was so nice to get to know about Applejack and um, Big Mac uh -huh. and Apple Blossom, uh, Apple, Apple Bloom, yeah. Apple Bloom's mom and dad. Because oh, might be another one. I got never go. seen them or heard of them, and you were always wondering, okay, well, what about their parents? Why are they living with the grandma? And it's bittersweet. Yes. Because oh, you man. have this beautiful story, but you understand that they're no longer alive. Yeah. It's very bittersweet. Yeah. Because kind of, you kind of don't realize they told them, like, you never see their parents. They have all these family reunions, all these cousins and uncles and aunts and stuff, but never the parents. You're like, right. where are the parents? And then, yeah, and then, and then people kept figuring out, are they gone or not? And people said they keep using past tense right. for them because they kept hearing from all these different people that knew them and they kept on each part of the story of what happened mm -hmm. and how it came to be. And, yeah, you kind of figure out that something happened to them, but they just didn't delve into that. Um, and it was a really just, it was a really great episode and emotional because I almost cried at the end. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, gosh, I forgot. They're gone. Right. And, like, and and they kind of moved on and it kind of stuff. Of uh, the reconciled at the very end, right. but it and the was a bright very... part where they made it a little brighter. Is now they know their grandfather, right? And he was, you know, he was so sorry for what had happened, and he wanted to be in their lives. So that was a nice uh, way to end it. It right. was bittersweet, but still, it had a bright spot. Right. There's someone else for them to love, and someone else to love them. Right, and it was a very, really great episode. And now for the season finale for season seven. I keep remembering more favorite episodes as we go along now, but I want to wait until we do this. Um, the end of season seven would be a two-parter called Shadow Play, mm -hmm. and in this one, uh, Sunburst finds this old book. That belongs to Star Swirl the Bearded, mm -hmm. and and he's been mentioned a lot of times within the show. And they find out that they actually disappeared long ago, and they found out that they had to keep this dark creature of called Pony of Shadows, mm -hmm. and they kind of trapped themselves in limbo within the book so it wouldn't destroy Equestria. Right. So they end up releasing them and freeing them, but they didn't know he was in there with them. Mm -hmm. So they end up releasing not only Star Swirl and these, I guess you said the original main six, mm -hmm. he also released the villain who wanted to take over again. Right. And it had been for a thousand years. 
So yeah, that kind of reminds me. Well, it actually doesn't kind of reminds me of Shaolin Showdown. Yes, where they released Wu Ya, who was right. for fifty. Yeah, that, that you can. Yeah, you say that is so, very similar. And uh, we won't ruin the ending. Right. So that's really all exciting. we're gonna. That's all we're gonna say about it. So we'll just leave it to you to watch it. Right. And now currently airing is season eight. Right. Which originally aired March twenty fourth of this year. Right. And we're gonna end up waiting for it to be on Netflix so mm -hmm. we can watch them all in a row and not have to wait to see week to week. Okay. And then for season nine, we're gonna join in with the fandom oh. and start watching them Why? episode by episode. All right. So so, so the, by. The, so the last thing, uh, I can't believe I skipped this. Mm -hmm. My final favorite episode besides the one where they helped this tribe of Na Native American buffaloes, which is earlier in the season. You could see it for yourself. The last favorite would be uh, the Brotherhood Social. Where, oh my god! I can't believe I almost skipped it. But we're going to talk about it in another podcast. So. Oh man! But okay. Okay, really quick, uh, when Applejack was gone because of another episode, so Big Mac, where he wants to spend more time with his little sister, and then Applejack was gone from one, from uh, another episode, mm -hmm. and she was really down, and he got up this whole sister hoof soul show, was just a big event for sisters, mm -hmm. and uh, he kind of uh, finds a way to get her in there still, so he dresses up as her cousin Orchid Blossom, <laughs> and uh, as a, a southern belle, uh, from the long lost cousin, and, and yeah, and he kind of <laughs> tried to help her win the medal so she wouldn't right. be sad. And it was a really endearing episode. And I couldn't fun. quit laughing. And full of fun, yes. I couldn't quit laughing at it. So, and it's so that's sweet it. because you also got to see, you know, he was feeling um, self conscious because he thought that she didn't have any interest in him anymore because she used to play with him a lot and they had this, you know, connection and relationship. But she gotten older and she gravitated more to Apple. Um, Applejack. Applejack. Yeah. And so she, he finds out from her that she still loves him and he's her hero. And so it was sweet, sweet, sweet. And uh, loved it, loved it, loved it. And right. you're right. You had to mention that, so I'm glad right. you brought it up. Okay, then that's it. That is My Little Pony Friendship Makes Magic. Go check it out on Netflix. It's available now. Or you can go to uh, the store and buy it on DVD. They have all the seasons out on uh, disc. So if you want to own them, you can. Or watch them on Netflix. They are all available to you at your convenience. And they have the theatrical movie in stores now, which we haven't seen right. yet. But when we do watch it, we're going to do give it its own podcast. Right. About uh, maybe 15 or 20 minutes. Right. So that's it for this week. Join us next week when we do our Family Favorites Podcast. Right. Which is going to feature The Loud House. The Proud Family and Phineas and Fur. Yes. So that's definitely wait. a fun. So gather the family for that one. I'm Masco Entertainment. And I'm Mama Entertainment. Have a tuntastic day. Peace. And remember, friendship is magic. In the mountaintops, rivers, and streams. Plucking sunlight from the sky in my pocket. Give it to you later on in the form of a locket. People in the back, for the people in the front, for the people on the side, for the people on the front, for the people in the middle, or the alley, one up off, and everybody who.